Hey guys, it's Olga again. Um, I am bringing to you my tutorial, my full face tutorial. Uh, I'm going to begin with the eyes and then we're going to work down to the nose and the lips. Um, and I guess then I'll make another video that just kind of finishes it. We'll do all the shading, work a little bit on the ears and the neck and the, the shoulders and the hair and all that good stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I've already done an eye tutorial, so I'm going to go through the eyes a little bit quickly. Um, while the eye tutorial that I posted previously kind of breaks it down as to how um, you can imagine an eye being there and to kind of use that as your guide in making your eye. Um, this is actually for the eyes part. Um, this is going to be more of how I just draw eyes because I don't really think about it um, as much as as much as I talk about it and break it down in that first tutorial. Oh. And for a reference image, um, I'm just using this 10 year old uh, Max Factor ad that I found in a really old issue of Cosmo. I think this is Josie Morgan, if I'm not mistaken, but it doesn't say on here, but it looks like her. Keep in mind that your eyes are going to be about one eye's width apart from one another. I've gotten a few questions about symmetry um, with eyes. And that's a general rule of thumb. It's going to um, it's going to vary a little bit from person to person. Some people are going to have wider set eyes, so then this distance is going to be a little bit further. And then some people have narrower set eyes. But the more symmetric you have everything, the more appealing it's going to be to the viewer, typically. And you can use both of your eyes to make sure that you're um, fairly symmetrical. Match up the um, tear duct, your lid, and then your outer. Just a little bit too dark. Keep in mind for a relaxed eye, you want your iris to fall in almost with straight lines coming down. Whereas, here I'll show you, if you want someone who looks shocked, amazed, horrified, etc., etc., you want this curve to come in more, and you'll see what I'm talking about. See how immediately it just looks kind of, our eyes are wide open. We don't want that right now. We want... I want her to look relaxed and at ease. And I'm not trying to get my image to look exactly like a reference photo. Um, I'm probably going to refer back to this just for shadow references. Um, but I'm not trying to uh, I'm not trying to replicate this image exactly. And I typically don't try to replicate an image uh, piece for piece. I typically just try to use the reference image as a little bit of a help me out um, as I'm adding shadows and curves and, and things like that. Don't want to listen to whatever that is. Oh, here we go. That's a crazy phone. Okay, and your eyebrow is going to come in just, it's going to begin just past the, uh, the tear duct here. And you can see from here, her eyebrow, your your mind might tell you that your eyebrow is going to be higher up, like here. Um, but if you're using a reference photo, it's really nice because you can refer back to it. 
because your mind can be kind of deceptive to you. So look at this reference photo and you can see her eyebrow actually begins basically just above where her eye ends. And the arch of your eyebrow is pretty much going to have its highest point at the end of your eye, so the outside corner. And don't worry about all these stray lines. We'll fix it later. And again, I'm just making nice, soft reference lines here. Not making anything really dark, so I can change anything when I make mistakes. And see little things like this that you wouldn't think about. If you look on this reference photo here, there's this nice little highlight just under this eyebrow. And your brain wouldn't necessarily tell you to put that there because that's something that's going to vary from the lighting of the photo and things like that. But it's really nice. It's really interesting. And likewise, it's going to make your image more interesting as you're making it. And the best way to make highlights when you're using graphite, which I'm using an 8B pencil right now, um, is to make the surrounding area darker. Or that's what I think. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Got light coming in there. Go ahead and darken in our pupil. And again, don't forget that, well, in particular with this image here, she's got crazy lashes. So they're going to cast a big shadow on her eye. Alright, that's about all I can handle with that song. So see, the darker you make, even the widest parts of your image, um, it makes it more interesting. And then you can go back and use your nice little kneaded eraser, and you can add in highlights, which are going to give it more depth, and likewise make it much more interesting to look at. Eyebrow over here. There's our, the highest part of her eyebrow. Now, Josie Moran's beautiful and all, but her eyebrows are a little bit spock looking in this picture, so um, I'm going to change these just a little bit. Mine are going to curl in just a tad. That's how I'm most comfortable doing eyebrows. That's another really interesting thing about women's faces is um, they have this really nice curve of their eyebrows. A nicely curved eyebrow is always nice on a woman. Um, with a man, not so much. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want much curve in your eyebrow on a guy. That'll make him look kind of funny. Make him look um, not quite like a girl. And I'll also use my finger to kind of create the contour of my nose, which is here. I think I've actually made her nose quite a bit broader than it used to be. Um, on a guy, this um, the forehead is going to be much bigger in this area, which will cast 
usually um, a very large shadow here, right between the eyes. On a woman, we still have that, but it's just kind of faint. So you've got, because this goes in a little bit where your nose begins. And keep in mind when you're drawing eyebrows that um, the underside, the part that's closest to the eye, is going to be darker. And that's what's going to uh, make it look more like an eyebrow. When you make the underside darker and this side, or the, the top side, this side closest to the forehead, lighter. I think my eyebrows aren't going to be as finely managed as hers are. Hers are going to be a little bit unruly. I think I'll probably go over this in ink for you guys. I think you'll be able to see it better. Um, but right now, while I'm just sketching it out, I'm going to use my trusty pencil. Light source here. You can just see the more different textures and lines that you have on here, it's just going to be more interesting rather than if you're, you're just having an image where you have an eye, <laughs> an eye, an eye here, and then, you know, it's just very, very, very minimal. So, the more lines you're adding, the more interesting it's getting. As long as they're soft, don't make them, don't make them too dark. You can see from the outer corner of her eye, it's actually darker. There's almost, not a hole, but there's a little tiny gap here where her eye meets the eyeball, or the skin of her eye meets. And so then we have this lip here that actually meets the eyeball, and then out from that is where you have the outer lip, and this is where your eyelashes will come out of. And you just add layer after layer, building up the depth. And she has got some rock star eyelashes in this ad. 
don't think I'm gonna do the same amount of eyelashes in my I don't know. Maybe I changed my mind. I don't think so. And you can see it doesn't really look like Josie Moran. You're not looking at my image and thinking, wow, that looks just like that I had. Uh, or at least I don't think it, it looks like that. Um, and that's fine with me. I think it's really cool when people can they can make their um, their images look just like a photograph, but I think it's more interesting when it's your own interpretation. Has to be bad. I'm just dropping in some highlights in the eye just so I don't forget about them more than anything. And I still haven't really added any lines that are really prominent or harsh. Everything is still pretty soft. Just mapping everything out. Alright. And then you'll notice under the eye. There is um, it's darker. It's darker under this bottom lash too, especially towards the outer edges. Because again, you've got you've got a round eyeball in here. So where this orbit is, the skin is kind of wrapped around it. So accordingly, you have dark spaces where it's hugging that eyeball. I think I'm about done with the eyes for now going to do a separate video that kind of finishes this whole image out um, once I've got everything in place just because that's how I have to work. I, I couldn't, I can't work and get these eyes completely finished and then work on the rest of it. I just, my brain, my brain I can't handle it. I can't do that. I just, it's too much for me. Um, another thing that might be helpful when we're talking about symmetry is if you want to do one eye, measure that eye, and then measure from the tear duct to where you want the other tear duct. That should be about one eye's length. And then you can likewise measure that again. I just, I can't do that. I can't, can't be that rigid. <laughs> um, but by all means, do it if it helps you. And it does help some people. Some people really enjoy measuring everything out, but I just, I can't do it. Not that discipline. Okay, so I think. Oh no, you know what? I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add some ink. And I'm just using um, a good old Japanese-made jelly roll pen. Um, here's the white one. I get a lot of questions about these white ones in my videos. Um, it works a lot like um, an acrylic pen, except it doesn't leak all over the place or clump up or anything like that. It's really cool. I love this thing. Um, so we're going to use this. I'm pretty pretty content with the way everything is laid out. I think I'm actually going to pull this eyebrow out just a little bit. There we go. Okay. 
So just really quickly, I'm going to add in super dark. May even go nuts and add some color in here. And if you're going to use both um, ink as well as the um, the graphite, keep in mind you only want to use the ink on your the darkest darkest places of your image. So I'm just going to go around the top of my iris, my pupil, maybe shade in a little bit here. I mean, I can't erase this, so this is a commitment right here. Um, you can see her lashes really start right here. So I'm only going to use the ink to right there, and then I'm just going to leave it alone. And then maybe put a little bit of ink right there, because that's pretty dark right there, and her tear depth. The line there. There we go. Um, and then I can go ahead and add in her eyelashes too. I guess. And this nice little full skin. Get ever so slightly gumped up. Not gonna do much good. Hmm. I'm not gonna fill in the entire eyebrow. Just some of the darkest spots in it. Again, with the addition of different uh, medium that you're using, you're using ink and you're using graphite and you're using color pencil. Uh, the more you're adding, it's just different textures, which is just going to make it more interesting. Almost done with the eyes. Yay. Once they get the eyes done, everything else is kind of secondary. <laughs> I don't know why, but it just seems easier. Once you get the eyes done, it's like, eh, the rest of the face is okay. I'll figure it out somehow. Okay. 
All right, so you got the eyes done for now, and then I'm going to go ahead and stop this and just make this pupil a little bit darker. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this, and then when I come back, we will begin working on her nose. And actually, the whole mid part of her face, her nose, and then I guess we'll go ahead and begin finishing the, the sides of her face as well. Just see you in just a video.